Hard work pays off. Dreams come true. Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. Jeff Hardy, the charismatic enigma here, and you are watching the Common Sense Ain't Common podcast. Bitch, I'm that damn good. Smoking on some good, some rosy on the wood. Standing on the shit so you can get it understood. It's pedigree and me because I'm that damn good. Bitch, I'm that damn good. Bitch, I'm that damn good. Smoking on some good, something rosy on the wood. And bitch, I got the bell, so you just get it understood. It's pedigree and me because I'm that damn good. Bitch, I'm that damn good. Big ol' body, I'm turning. Big ol' wood, I'm burning. Big ol' booty, I'm yearning. Big ol' bucks, I'm earning. I put a hand on designer. But she don't regal behind her. I'm about to give her that weight, yeah. She ain't been living like China. I'm out of the to referee. I put a ring on the Stephanie. Me and the team is building a legacy when it goes separately. Play the game. I had to change the name. Rolling the band is playing. You can find the stain. Bitch, I'm that damn good. Yeah. Smoking Yo. Yo. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 33, 34. I don't I don't know. We're on episode 33 or 34. Welcome to the Common Sense and Common Podcast, our wrestling weekly report. Of course, I am your host, the illustrious, your role model, the blueprint, Dame Don. And I am coming to you live, live, in color, in studio, bringing you the Common Sense and Common Podcast. Uh, make sure you all are hitting those socials at Dame Don on Twitter and Don Life with two N's and two E's on Instagram. Let's just go ahead and start off by saying rest in peace to Sky Hall. Sky Hall was, you know, a legend in this business, an absolute legend in this business. He was, I guess he was struggling with some, some, some health things and some drinking problems and things of that nature, but... All of that aside, Scott Hall was an absolutely tremendous wrestler, a tremendous character. The Ayo Chico, the, the, the fucking flipping the toothpick. I can't even count how many times I flicked the toothpick. Scott Hall was definitely an all-time great. Definitely just kind of came out of nowhere that he was sick. And even when he got inducted into the Hall of Fame, everybody was making that such a big deal just because um, nobody thought he would have lived that long. So it is good that he had you know, lived a couple years longer after being in the Hall of Fame, but now there are stories coming out about the actual Hall of Fame of how he was, you know, drunk in the bar and things of that nature. But regardless of all that, we definitely just want to wish Sky Hall our well wishes and, you know, to the whole clique, the X-Pac, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, of course, Kevin Nash, you know, we definitely want to wish them well. And, you know, I know it's never easy losing a loved one, especially like Kevin, Kevin, um, Kevin Nash said having somebody that, you know, has been by your side more than your whole life or, you know, spending more than half of your life with somebody and now they're just gone. I know that it has to be extremely hard. So we definitely want to send our thoughts and prayers out with Scott Hall and his family and his friends and, of course, all of the wrestling community as well, because we were all kind of hit by that. William Regal and Jeff Hardy are both. All Elite. I told you Jeff Hardy was going to be All Elite. I told you. I told you. Nobody wants to listen to me. Nobody wants to listen to me. Everybody wants to listen to the kid with the little blonde swoop in his hair. Nobody wanted to listen to me. But I think what I did wrong was, well, I know what I did wrong. I'm not going to tell you what I did wrong, but I know what I did wrong, and I'll definitely do it well in the future or do better at it in the future. But William Regal is an absolute legend in this business. If you ask me, my answer will probably never change. William Regal is probably one of the greatest wrestlers to never hold the world championship. Huge, 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 huge 
Regal fan. There's been Regal's, there's been concerns coming out about Regal's health. Regal actually did just get on Twitter yesterday and um, debunk those rumors and state that he is feeling better than he has been in quite some time. And the health issues that he was addressing was actually something that took place back in 2018. Um, so William Regal is good and he is up to health. He is back in the ring cutting promos. It word, word around the street is that he went a little long on his promo according to what he said on Twitter. Um, but I'm pretty sure the people in the back didn't mind him going over on his promo. I'm sure everybody was just kind of in awe, you know, just because William Regal is a great, well, he's, he's somebody that when they talk, you listen, like, you know, that they're going to give you some knowledge, you know, that they have all this knowledge to give you. So I don't think that there was really a lot of heat on William Regal for going long in his promo, but you know, it was just the nice Englishman thing to do to apologize. And we all know that, you know, British people are, you know, some of the nicest people in the world. Some of them, not all of them, not all of them. Jeff Hardy came out doing the fucking jug in the ring while his brother is being beat up in the air. I was actually listening to the Matt Hardy podcast. I didn't even know Matt Hardy had a fucking podcast. I was listening to the Matt Hardy podcast this morning with Jeff. And Matt actually said that him coming out and doing the dance was actually Matt Hardy's idea, not Jeff Hardy's idea. Jeff wanted to just run straight to the ring. Matt Hardy wanted him to do a full entrance and then come in and, <laughs> and then come in and save him. But Jeff just kind of put it together and did both of them at the same time. It's a really good interview. I haven't finished it, but I will go ahead and finish that later on today. I have been in isolation quite some time playing WWE 2K22. This is probably the best game WWE has released um, of the 2K series. The best game 2K has released of the 2K series. Absolutely flawless gameplay. Gameplay, absolutely flawless gameplay. There is a couple issues now that I've continued to play it. There is a couple issues with universe mode um, and the renders. I don't really care about the renders, honestly. Um, but there's people are having issues with the renders and things like that. Universe mode is bugged the fuck out. That is one thing I can say. There's a lot of issues with tag teams and tag team entrance music and tag team motions. Universe is bugged the fuck out, but I'm kind of working through the through the bugs just the best way that I can. But this is honestly the best game 2K has released. And once we get an update for it, I think that'll prove it even further. Um, I did also drop a review to WWE 2K22, so I'll go ahead and put that down in the description as well. We are a little bit all over the place because I didn't drop a wrestling episode last week and instead I just dropped that 2K22 review. So I'll be covering things from last week and this week and just kind of giving you a breakdown in my opinion of everything. For everybody that was here for my Royal Rumble recap episode, I was talking about how I was waiting on the chair that did come. And then also I was waiting on the souvenir ticket from the Royal Rumble, which actually finally came. I was there. But I see why it took so long because, you know, they take this picture and then they get the attendance and stuff. So I do see why it takes so long. I was actually just going to chuck it up as a loss. I thought they just weren't going to send it. But since I know it takes three months after the event to get, I think I'm going to actually go ahead and order one for WrestleMania. This is my first WrestleMania. So this is what the souvenir tickets look like. And they ask you if you want to buy it like on um, like on Ticketmaster. When you're buying the ticket, you can just add it in. So I think I'm going to add one for WrestleMania Night 1 and Night 2. It was only like $15, $20, something like that. As you all know, I'm going to WrestleMania Night 1, WrestleMania Night 2, Raw after WrestleMania, uh, SmackDown after WrestleMania. The podcast is going to be absolutely loaded with wrestling content uh, beginning in April. Um, as I discussed, I won't do a uh, non-wrestling episode in between that time, but it'll just be all wrestling just coming at you hot, coming at you hot. The WrestleMania things, like those should be update uploaded. Those should be uploaded the night that they're happening. Like, so after WrestleMania, you should see something on YouTube from WrestleMania Night 1. I don't know if it'll technically be the full vlog, but you should see something. And I think I'm going to post little clips here and there, and then also in addition to the full vlog as well, and then just kind of capture little entrances here and, there, here and 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 there, and then post it in the full vlog as well. But I'm definitely very excited for WrestleMania. We are just weeks away, just about two or three weeks away. 
also my birthday March 29th I'm going to the show on March 30th and then we're just gonna ride the whole week out until I don't even remember what day I leave I have to look at you but we're just gonna ride that whole wave out until you know I get back and then we're going to Smackdown I'm gonna need to be like in a recovery rehab after all this <laughs> Big E has broken his neck. Well, not broken his neck. Richard, Rich Holland, whatever his name is, broke his fucking neck. Rich Holland has injured two or three people now, including himself. I don't know if we can necessarily count him breaking his face on him. I don't know if that would necessarily be an error on his part. But he's injured two or three people now. Big E, fucking Drew McIntyre, fucking himself. Like, what are you, what's going on? Why are they trying to build this guy up so big? He is like, he's like to the point where if this was Nia Jax, they would be calling Nia Jax dangerous and, and brutal and everything else that they were calling Nia Jax. Why is nobody calling Rich Holland those things? And Rich Holland has been in the business a fraction of the time Nia has been. Nia was in the business years before she injured somebody years before the whole Becky Lynch face break thing and my whole thing is I don't even think people were really mad at Nia I think everybody just loved Becky so much and then they took they took that match away from Becky at Survivor Series so then that turned everybody on Nia but they got a they got a WrestleMania main event out of that but I definitely feel like that's that's really the core of why everybody hated Nia but it's just ironic because now everybody hates Becky. So you're still hating Nia for hurting Becky. And now y'all don't even like Becky. So what are, what's what's really going on? What is really going on? Rich Holland should definitely be put on the back burner. Speaking of Rich Holland, they've changed Pete Dunne's name to Butch. And now he's running with Rich Holland and, and Sheamus. I, I hope this is not like something permanent. I hope that this is just something where... They're bringing him in and going to reintroduce him as Pete Dunn. But as we've seen with Piper Nevin and Dewdrop, I highly doubt it. I, I, I definitely think they're going to keep him as Butch and not Pete Dunn because it's almost like they're refusing to turn Piper Nevin back into Piper Nevin. We're just kind of stuck with Dewdrop. And that name was given to her by Eva Marie. And Eva Marie isn't even here anymore. So, like, it's... It, I don't get the whole name change thing. I don't get the, the, the look change thing. I can maybe understand trying to give people a fresher look or, you know, make them look, you know, fresher, more appealing or, 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 you know, jump off to a new audience to people that don't know what they are. But I kind of feel like they're just changing shit unnecessarily. Pete Dunne was fine. Didn't need to be changed. Uh... Walter didn't need to be changed. There's just a lot of people that don't need to be changed and they're still changing them. Just stop changing them. Dolph Ziggler is the new NXT World Heavyweight Champion becoming the first ever wrestler to win the World Heavyweight Championship and then the NXT title. I'm really happy for Ziggler. I can't lie. Ziggler is one of the most underrated talents there is and has been for years. Uh, you want to talk about buried. Ziggler has been buried for quite some time. Ziggler has been buried for quite some time, for quite some time. And aside from when he's just in little tag teams and stuff like that, like that's all they give him is just these little tag team runs aside this NXT push now. They just give him these little tag team runs. Oh, with Drew McIntyre and Sheamus then, or, or Drew McIntyre and Dolph. Then Drew turns on him and Drew's this big baby face. And then we didn't see Dolph for a while. And then he was with Robert Roode until I guess Robert Roode turns on him. And then Robert Roode will maybe catapult and then that'll leave Ziggler back down here again. Ziggler has been criminally underrated, criminally underused for years now. But I did go to the Dolph Ziggler comedy show in Vegas and he doesn't care because of the money he's making. And he was saying we were at the comedy show and he said, Oh, did you guys like the show tonight? And everybody was like, Yeah, it was SummerSlam in Vegas. Everybody's like, Yeah, it was really good. He was like, Oh, I probably made more than everybody on the card. <laughs> like he just doesn't care. He wasn't even on the card. He just doesn't care. And he was just talking about his base salary and all this shit. He doesn't give a fuck because the check is clearing. And I think that's the mindset of a lot of them. They're not really pushing to do this or do that because the check is clearing at the end of the day. 
That's all that matters is the check clear. But he did take the title off Braun Breaker. There is news going around that Braun Breaker could be headed to the main roster. Hopefully they don't change him too much. And if they do change him, hopefully they change him into a Steiner. Because it is definitely that time to change him into a Steiner. While we're talking about NXT, let's just take a minute and talk about God's greatest creation. The baddest bitch in the game. Man. Mandy is absolutely killing it. You want to talk about somebody that has reinvented herself, really took the I'm not just a pretty face thing literally and quite seriously. Mandy has turned her entire persona around, even dyed her bleach blonde locks back to brunette. She is going places here. And I, I, I almost I, I love her with toxic attraction, but I almost cannot wait to see what happens once toxic attraction is gone because Mandy's always kind of been in a tag team in a tag team of course now she's the leader of toxic attraction bringing that whole absolution thing kind of full circle but I just can't wait to see what happens when Mandy's on her own doesn't have anybody to depend on I think that's really when we're gonna see like that real wrestling side of Mandy comes out because she gives you little glimpses here and little glimpses there. But I feel like when she's really in there and she's going to have to fend for herself, that's when we're, that's when we're really going to see Mandy Rose, the wrestler. Like we're really going to see that because you can definitely tell bell to bell. She's been putting the work in. You definitely have to put respect on the name of God's greatest creation. The baddest bitch in the game. Mandy Rose. We love you, Mandy. We, we love you, Mandy. We love the Mandys. We love you too, Sonya. Speaking of Sonya, well, hold on, hold on. Sonya Deville probably has the best theme song for the women right now. She probably has the best theme song of the women. I am a beast. I am a menace. I am the storm. I'm coming to get it. Say what? Like, she has the best song right now, bro. Please go listen to Sonya Deville's new theme song. WWE 2K22 needs to add that song into the game. They need to add it. That she is, oh my God. I am a beast. I am a menace. I am the storm. I'm coming to get it. Say what? <laughs> Say what? A certified winner the day I was born. Okay, stop before we get a copyright. I guess this whole Austin Kevin Owens thing is actually genuinely happening at WrestleMania. Kevin Owens and, um, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins actually just had a match this past Monday just to decide who's going to interview Kevin Owens or whatever have you, or, or interview Steve Austin or whatever's going to go on between them, and Kevin Owens won the match, so this is actually a real thing. I, I'm really excited that I'm going to see Stone Cold Steve Austin live. It's clear that Stone Cold is going to stunner somebody. I did just read an interview where Stone Cold said he was getting back in ring shape. So it'll be interesting to see if maybe Saturday is going to be a setup for something on Sunday. But I did just read an interview and Austin said he was getting ready in ring shape. Um, I just can't wait to hear that glass break live. I can't wait to see that stunner live. I've never seen Stone Cold live. I'm also hoping to see Vince McMahon live in some way, form, or fashion. Like, Vince is the only McMahon I have not seen live. I've seen Stephanie. I was a kid when I seen Stephanie. I would love to see her again. And I've seen Shane. I've never seen Vince live. I don't think Linda really counts. She's, like, at the White House and shit now, but... I've never seen Vince live. If I hear that, no chance of that's what you got, I'm going to die in the arena. I have to see Vince. Fingers crossed Vince accompanies Austin Theory to the ring or something of that nature. Fingers fucking cross. But with Kevin Owens interviewing Steve Austin, where does that leave Seth Rollins for WrestleMania? So that either leaves Cody Rhodes, which everybody's speculating because Dave has spoiled it, just like he has spoiled every goddamn thing. Before I get into Seth right fast, everybody wants to say WWE is so predictable, so predictable. It's not predictable. Dave Meltzer is spoiling every goddamn thing. It's not predictable. It's being spoiled. That, that, that's completely different. So everybody wants to say, oh, it's so predictable. Oh, oh, I, I seen that coming a mile away. You didn't see that coming a mile away. You wanted, you read it a month ago because Dave spoils every fucking thing. Just like he spoiled Cody Rhodes coming in and they're trying to get Cody versus Seth for WrestleMania. He spoils everything. And then everybody says, oh, WWE is so uninteresting. WWE, nobody cares about WWE. It's so predictable. Stop reading the spoilers. Stop reading the spoilers. It's really that simple. I don't read spoilers. 
if I see a spoiler, I scroll past it as quickly as I can. Like, I avoid spoilers at all costs. I don't mess with spoilers. I don't want my show messed with. Like... It's almost like reading about reading about a movie and then going to see the movie. Why are you going to see the movie? Then you're going to sit through the movie the whole time and say, "Wow, I seen that coming." Oh, wow, I knew I knew that building was going to fall on him cuz you read it. What are you talking about? You read it. You read it. But Cody Rhodes is rumored to be Seth Rollins' opponent at WrestleMania. If Cody Rhodes does not show up, I predict Seth Rollins being placed into um, the triple threat match maybe with Damian Pierce and um, Finn Balor. I definitely see Seth maybe being added to that match. They're already doing that match at house shows. And usually what they do on house shows is an indication of what's coming on TV down the line or um, in the future or whatever. But he has been added to these United States Championship matches on house shows. So I think that that may be his WrestleMania match if Cody Rhodes does no show. Queen Charmelle has been announced for the 2022 Hall of Fame, along with Vader and The Undertaker. Um, I really don't mind Queen Charmelle going in. Actually, when I read the post, all I could hear was, Oh, hell, King Booker! Oh, hell, King Booker! You don't know. <laughs> that is all she would say his whole entrance. But that is all I could hear was, All hell, King Booker the whole time. But... I'm okay with Charmelle going in. I really am. Charmelle was a huge part in King Booker's career, uh, a part of King Booker's title reign, King Booker's rivalry with the Boogeyman. She was a huge part in all of that. The only thing is, is I hope she's not the only woman going in. Charmelle does deserve it, but there's a lot of women that deserve it a lot more. Where is Victoria? Where is China's solo introduction? Where is Jazz? Where is fucking, um, you could put Stacey Keebler in. Like, where, where are the people that have really paved the way for women's wrestling? Like, we need to get these people in because it seems like they try to almost, and I'm not saying they do it on purpose, but it's like they, they don't really give people their flowers until they die. Like, much like Vader. Right before Vader died, like, one of his dying wishes was to go into the Hall of Fame, like, while he was still alive. And then they waited till the year after he died to put him in. But of course, I do know like the Hall of Fame is something that's set in stone and set in place months and months and months in advance. But I definitely feel like they could have worked something out to have Vader gone in that year that he was alive. I definitely hope that, you know, we get jazz um, inductions and Victoria inductions while these people are still here. I don't want to wait until like they're not here to accept these flowers and things like that. Because now we're getting into the era of my childhood. You know what I'm saying? Like now this is people I grew up watching. So now it's getting to the point where I want to watch these speeches. I want to hear what they want to, what they have to say. I want to know, you know, what went into this how they think about this i really want to know that so i just feel like charmelle does deserve it but there's a lot of women that deserved it a lot more speaking of deserving Liv morgan and rhea ripley have been added to the women's championship match at wrestlemania um it looks like this is probably going to be like that fatal four-way women's tag team match at wrestlemania that we get every year i'm pretty sure that natty's going to be in the match i'm sure natty's going to find a partner of some sort i almost honestly see sonya tag teaming with natty to you know get back at naomi i, I guess this feud is kind of over but i still genuinely don't see sonya deville not interfering with this WrestleMania match with Naomi. Um, I definitely feel like they could have paid this rivalry off at WrestleMania. I almost feel like they could have had Sonya say, you know, you're not having a WrestleMania moment. You're not having a WrestleMania moment. And then they finally just put them in a match together at WrestleMania against each other. This definitely has been built to where they could have just had a singles WrestleMania match. But Sasha Banks has never had a WrestleMania win. It's been years since Naomi has held a title. I definitely feel like they are the favorites to win this match. But then you add more deserving people. And this is what WWE does every year. And they kind of back themselves into a corner. Because Rhea and Liv also deserve the Women's Tag Team Champions. Liv has deserved the Women's Tag Team Champions since last year. She, she should have won with fucking uh, Ruby Riot. I still can't believe the Riot Squad have never won the Tag Team Titles. So Liv has deserved the tag team titles for years now. So now it's almost like damned if I do, damned if I don't, who the fuck am I going to have win? And like we've seen in the last couple years, aside from the Iconics, every time they do these matches, the team that wins is the team that deserves it the least. Just like Natty and Tamina last year. What the fuck was that? 
Every team in that match deserved to be champions except the people that won. I didn't get that at all. Speaking of WrestleMania, let's just quickly talk about WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar and Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns will be having the championship unification match at WrestleMania, of course. I'm really hoping that we get like some type of new title design. I did hear that we're supposed to be getting a new design and then they're going to reintroduce another title onto the other show. So I definitely hope they somehow put these title belts together and we get a new title design. I really want a new title. I really do enjoy how this title looks, but I really would enjoy a new title design just because we've had that since like 2016 or something like that. So I'm really hoping we get that. Ronda and Charlotte main eventing WrestleMania. There's a lot of people that have a lot of different feelings about this. There's a lot of discrepancies about this. Me personally, I only care because it's Charlotte Flair. If this was Ronda Rousey main eventing with somebody else, I, I personally wouldn't give a fuck. I wouldn't give a fuck. But I feel like people are just ignoring the history of the match just because of who's in the match. Charlotte Flair has so much pent up aggression towards Ronda Rousey and as does Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey cost Charlotte Flair her title at WrestleMania. When Becky became two belts, Charlotte Flair lost her title and was never even pinned. Then you go to Survivor Series, or Survivor Series was before that, but then you go to Survivor Series, then they have this one-on-one -on -one match with Ronda and Charlotte. Charlotte beats the shit out of her with the kendo stick. So they both owe receipts on each other. I definitely feel like it could have been billed better. I feel like with this like parking lot thing they just tried to do on Friday Night SmackDown, I think they tried to redo what they did with Becky, Ronda, and Charlotte a couple years ago, and this time it just fell completely flat. I don't like that they're trying to do this, oh, Charlotte has never tapped out thing, Charlotte has never tapped out thing. I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. So for me, the story really isn't it's there, but it's not there for me. I, I really just genuinely care because it's Charlotte Flair, if I'm being 100% honest. Becky versus Bianca is a far better feud. They both are the only two women to main event WrestleMania win their respective WrestleMania main events, and now they're facing each other at WrestleMania. You could argue that that would be a better pay-per-view. I really do enjoy their build better than the SmackDown Women's Championship build. I can't lie, but we don't slander the queen over here. We don't slander the queen over here, but I have been enjoying their build a lot better. That I can say. Um, also, I'm going to be honest again. They probably should be main eventing. They probably should be main eventing just, just with the tagline alone of the only two women that have won their WrestleMania main events facing each other. And then you add the history of beating Bianca in 30 seconds. Then you add the history of every time Becky beat Bianca, she cheated to win. Then, like, you could just kind of build off that. But they're going strictly off name. Ronda Rousey main eventing is going to sell more tickets than Becky Lynch and Bianca main eventing simply because... Ronda is more household names. Ronda's more of a household name. If you're sitting there and you're watching Sports Center, uh, Sports Center and you don't watch wrestling and you hear Ronda Rousey's face of Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania, you're gonna go, "Oh shit, Ronda Rousey." But if you just hear, "Oh, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte, uh, Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair in the main event of WrestleMania," you know they don't even know them. You know what I'm saying? They're probably like, oh, she fine as a bitch, but they don't know them. You know what I'm saying? Ronda Rousey is a household name. So that is why Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair are main events in WrestleMania. Aside from Charlotte Flair being the queen and everybody will bow down to the queen. A couple names I'm expecting after WrestleMania. I definitely need to see Lacey Evans, Bailey, who just tweeted she's a free agent. So that almost makes me think she's going to Raw. And Asuka. We really need to see them. Lacey Evans just had a baby. Asuka has been cleared and uncleared and cleared and uncleared according to the rumors. I don't know what the fuck is going on with uh, Asuka. And Bailey is scheduled to return sometime after WrestleMania. And we do know that after WrestleMania, they do all these big debuts and returns and things like that. So I definitely think we can expect her on a Raw or a SmackDown after WrestleMania. And I'll be at both of them. This is the first Raw after WrestleMania without a crowd or with a crowd. Because last year was without a crowd. So this year with the crowd should be fucking nuts. I really cannot wait. 
It should be fucking nuts. It should be nuts. RK Bro have become the two-time tag team champions. And Randy Orton has done this promo saying, oh, Riddle is my friend, you know. And I just really feel like the way Orton is really portraying this, oh, you're my friend, I just smell a heel turn. I smell a heel turn. But I really, really, really hope they have Riddle turn on Randy just because it's so expected for Randy to turn on Riddle. Just like when... Just like when Bailey turned on Sasha, everybody was expecting Sasha to turn on Bailey. So then when Bailey turned, everybody was like, what the fuck? Like, what is going on? I feel like Riddle turning on Randy would get that same reaction as Bailey turning on Sasha. I don't think they're going to turn Riddle a heel just because of how he's bro and how he's, you know, just a cool dude. I don't think they're going to turn him heel just on that factor alone. But I definitely feel like if they were to turn him heel... He would definitely probably be on that same reaction level as Bailey turning on Sasha. But either way, somebody's turning heel just based on that You're My Friend promo. Somebody is definitely turning heel. Thunder Rosa has become the new AEW Women's Champion beating Dr. Britt Breaker in a bloody steel cage match. If one thing AEW is going to do, they're going to make some people bleed unnecessarily. If, if one thing AEW is going to do, they are going to make sure there is blood involved. They are actually not even going to hide the fact that you're cutting your forehead just like they did with John Mosley and David, uh, Daniel Bryan or, or Bryan Danielson, sorry, at, at Revolution. They're not going to hide the fact that they're cutting their head. Like You can literally go and see Bryan Danielson slicing his forehead open and then handing the razor to the referee just in clear plain sight like the cameraman wasn't even trying to cover it up it was almost like the cameraman was watching to make sure he cut it correctly like <laughs> they don't care i do think aew's women division does need some work people are trying to say that the steel cage match just blew wwe's women's division out of the water and i think like whatever y'all are smoking i would like a puff or two of it because there's just no way um AEW is signing a lot, a lot, a lot of talent. They're signing a lot of talent, and it's, it's, it's almost starting to give me TNA Dixie vibes. Um, because what are you going to do with all this fucking talent? Where the fuck are people that you, you've already signed? Where's Ruby Soho? Ruby Soho went over there thinking the grass is green on the other side, and we have seen nothing of Ruby Soho at all. She, she's been somewhere on YouTube with me. Hi, hi, Ruby. How are you? Like, she, she's she's probably in my suggestions right here or down there or wherever the fuck they are. Like, she's nowhere to be found. Where are you, Ruby Soho? She went over there thinking the grass was greener. There's a lot of people that are just kind of going there. So if Cesaro goes there, you're going to be lost in the shuffle. Like, what are you going to do with these people after they have these huge big spots? Then you also have to think a lot of these older guys aren't going to be wrestling forever. Jericho, not wrestling forever. Hardy's, not wrestling forever. What are you going to do in two to three years when these guys' contracts are up? Brian Danielson. Uh, uh, like, what are you going to do when these guys' contracts are up? What, what's going to happen? They definitely have to start. And I'm not saying that, you know, they're only pushing WWE guys because all of their champions are AEW homegrowns. That I will give them. They make sure that they put the titles on their homegrown talent. They don't, they don't just bring people in and give them the title right away. That is one thing I can say, you know, good for you for. But they are literally just bringing everybody in. It is a revolving door. Maybe he's going to do something with ROH. I'm not really sure. But at what point, when do you cut yourself off and say, okay, I can't sign any more talent? I, I can't. I really want you, but I just can't do it right now. At what point do you do that? Because you just bought ROH for $40 million. Meanwhile, Vince bought WCW for four. So are you really playing chess or are you playing checkers? Let's just quickly jump over to Impact and then this is probably one of my last things that I wanted to cover. Impact needs a new channel. Big Cass is over at Impact killing it. Zack Ryder killing it. The world champion Moose killing it. The Inspiration just lost their tag titles to Madison Rain and uh, to Neil Dashwood, Emma. But they're still over there killing it too. And Impact is only getting about 100,000 views a week. Impact really needs to get another channel. They really need to maybe try to get back on Spike or something of that nature because Impact on Axis ain't it. 
It ain't it. It ain't hitting. It ain't producing what it's supposed to produce. It ain't giving what it's supposed to give. They definitely need to try to get back over to Spike or get back over to something that is more worldwide, more accessible to people, more accessible to the customer. On tonight's SmackDown, we're going to see the fallout of Sami Zayn's phone number being leaked by Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> People were actually literally calling Sami Zayn and he was literally answering the phone on FaceTime with fans. Like That was some of the craziest shit I've ever seen. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns should be coming face to face tonight. So there is some exciting things going on. There hasn't been too much announced as of me recording right now. But those are just the two things that I've seen so far. Thank you guys so much for chilling and listening with me on the Common Sense and Common Podcast, our wrestling weekly report. Make sure you all hit that like button, that subscribe button, because we are on our way to WrestleMania. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I'll see you all Monday. With the road dog, that nigga cold dog. I got a cold shoulder for a fuck nigga if he prove he a mug. I'm pulling up, I got the hammer. I threw an X on the banner. She ain't there throwing that ass at me, but I would not fuck if she bammer. She call me Billy like badass, I call her Billy like Jean. I never slack on the fast cash, even the jacket is jean. If it's a problem, I'm coming direct. I ended up.